working hard is not enough anymore. Smart and tech skills are now required to succeed, but being successful in tech was not as easy as you thought. This is a battle against yourself, the system, and everyone else. Your boss doesn't want to pay you, your brain is resisting the training, AI wants to replace you, YouTubers pitch you 10 new technologies every day, recruiters won't give you a chance, your mind is afraid and wants to quit. But the reward is amazing. The tech world is a new American dream, but I won't sell you dreams, free courses, or be politically correct. I'll give you the tools to fight these enemies like many have successfully done. This podcast is called Code Sets You Free, and my name is Alejandro. Let's begin. This first episode has horrible audio quality and other issues, but the content is great. So bear with me while I'm still learning the podcast. I promise to improve. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Code Sets You Free, the first edition of this podcast that will be about tech culture, but also about helping you and giving you the tools to win against all the enemies you have when succeeding in the tech world. I have here with me Tomas. Hi, Tomas. How are you? Hello, everyone. All good. All good. Tomas uh, was like you. He started coding uh, about four years ago, and he's going to tell better his story. But the idea behind this first episode is to give you someone that it's very relatable, that was going through the same process that you may be going right now, and that it's also a successful tech professional today in the industry. And at the same time, I want to introduce myself before I introduce Tomas or before Tomas introduce himself. I'm also a software developer. I have been coding for 25 years. And when I started, uh, there was basically no internet or there was some internet, but a little bit only, and I had to learn from a book. But I had 10 years to be good at it. And now these days you need six months, maybe seven, eight months to be good at, at coding and to be a, a successful tech professional. Uh, and then you have to start looking for a job, right? So it's a completely different scenario. I think it's way harder today than what it was 25 years ago. Like I did, I did it for fun. I did it. I didn't need it. Or actually, nobody needed it. It wasn't a, it wasn't a profession yet. There was no universities were not teaching it yet. So yeah, it was a completely different scenario. So I understand um, how difficult it is, obviously, to to learn coding and to motivate yourself to find a job, to do the networking online, to, to be good at speaking with recruiters, um, all these men mental constructs that we have that um, disable us from, from achieving the goal, right? Like imposter syndrome, um, the shitty bosses that maybe don't want you to succeed and they don't want to give you an opportunity um, or, or the badly implemented job portals that I mean, everyone's applying to the same things and and all the resumes look pretty much the same. And you have like 800 people or a thousand people applying to a, a job and you're just one of 1,000 people. So it's, it's, it's pretty tough. And then you have all these influencers out there telling you that maybe simplifying the task of, of becoming a software developer or, or making it seem like it's a language war or things like that. So yeah, we're going to speak about all these enemies and we know how hard it is to get into the tech world and Tomas is going to be a, a good testimonial for it. So yeah, why don't you introduce yourself, Tomas? Hello again, everyone. I'm currently a software developer with four years of experience. Uh, just like you, I had only four six to six months to, to learn how to code. I also had the same problem of applying to jobs, looking for jobs on, on these platforms like LinkedIn and, and others, which is very hard competing against a thousand people for the same position. Um, I'm currently managing our team on 4gigs.com of six developers and, and leading the technology team. But before we start, uh, just tell me, do you consider yourself um, a happy person professionally. Are you are you happy with your current professional profile or career? Yeah, I could I could say I'm I'm really happy with with this career. It actually allows me to to travel a lot, to work from everywhere around the world. Um, it allowed me to to have a, a good salary that let me do all these things that I love. Um, I'm really happy with it. And do you consider that the transition for you was a successful transition and something as you expected? 
Well, uh, yeah, once once I actually learned the, the required skills to get into the tech world, um, it was really quick until I got my first job. It was like a couple of months after I graduated from Wix Academy's bootcamp that, that I got my first job. And, and then the learning process was uh, faster and I kept growing and learning more things to, to scale up to in the, in the staircase of, of the learning process. Amazing. But t tell me a little bit about how you started. Like how was, uh, let's go back f four and a half years ago. And what was your mental state? Why did you decide to get into code? Well, um, actually it started a little bit earlier. Like eight years ago, I, I started trying to, to learn how to code. I was really young at that age, but, um, and I hadn't enough guidance to actually know what I should learn at that moment. But I started on YouTube. I was looking for these, uh, these influencers that post videos on YouTube on what you should learn and how to, how to code, et cetera. And it actually wasn't a, a really good experience. I. Uh, I started like trying to learn how to code with a, with a project of creating a video game on unity. And actually once I finished that, that tutorial, I thought that I was ready to like, to start working, to, to start doing like real life projects. But then I, I realized that these video tutorials that you get from YouTube aren't enough to learn how to code. They just, oh. um. Yeah, they, they just don't teach you how to do it. They, they show you what you have to type on your computer to, to get that project done, but they don't teach you how to do stuff. So that was one of the problems I had. Yeah, this, this brings me to one of the enemies, right? Like as, as Tomas speaks, I, what I would be doing is I trying to identify those enemies that are against you when learning to code and, and maybe speaking about it. And yeah, you're, you're, you're right. I agree with you, like finding these tutorials online that they, they may be explaining about a hundred things, a hundred different things, or you have a hundred different tutorials and you don't know which one to take. And the most of them, if not like the, the big, big majority of them are talking about technologies that you don't need right now, uh, because to get a job, you should focus on, on one or two main technologies instead of trying to learn like a lot of them. And then obviously when you, when you browse online and when you start looking for coding tutorials and stuff, you will find hundreds of them and you don't even know which one to pick right yeah that's that's what happened to me i i started with this video tutorial but before i started that um i got a, like a lot of languages that i should start with from from mm. these influencers so i was very confused yeah, it's funny because most of the people no not most but a big chunk of the people that i know that wanted to get into code they wanted to do games and after you try try doing some games at the beginning uh first you realize that there's not a lot of jobs that there's not a lot of companies hiring uh gaming developers so it's definitely not a good choice if if you want to get hired quickly and secondly it's not fun at all like doing a game is the opposite of playing a game it's it's a process that involves a lot of discipline and you could say that games also involve discipline, but it's a different kind of discipline that doesn't have any fun in it. And the languages are, are harder than the ones that you need to learn to get a job. And the storytelling, it's, it's required, it's mandatory for a successful game. So most of the people that decided to go get into a game, they don't focus much on the storytelling. They think it's just about doing the dynamics of the game, like doing the, the process and the, the building of the character and, and and the, the movements, but then they realize that it's a fun, it's a game that nobody's gonna play. That yeah, so it's on the completely different journey. We actually have we have a bunch of gaming developers in the community that have thought about this. How they they spoke about it, and they have like a letter that we published to the entire community on on how different it was playing the game to to coding a game. But yeah, so let's let's talk a little bit more about what happened after you tried learning because you said you were learning how to build games, right? Yeah, correct. So uh, you, you actually built a game, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Very basic one, but, but yes. And, and then what happened next? Like, let's say that you, you think, did you think that you were gonna be, that you were good at this at building games or no? Um, 
at first I thought I was really good because uh, I was looking at the video tutorial and I was following all those instructions and I was very quick on, on getting that, that game done. Right. But yeah, then... And you were following like, step uh, by step what the video said, like you, yeah, you would pause the video and then do it yourself, I guess. <laughs> basically, yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's another thing, like when you watch videos, I think are the enemy, one of your enemies when you, if you don't use them right. Those are one of the enemies because videos are like this ideal, perfect scenario, a utopia, right? Where you, you basically start following the video and then when, when you're alone, it's like, what? I don't remember or I don't know exactly what I'm doing. So the video was fun, but now in real life, I learned basically nothing. Yeah, that, that's what happened. So after that, I, I got really frustrated because I thought I was ready to build a video game, but I realized I wasn't because I didn't learn enough on that tutorial. I just follow instructions. Right. Yeah. Coding is a, a humbling process. I, the majority, well, not the majority, but I hear a lot from students that they think they're good at it. They, they don't put enough hours or, or, or they get comfortable and they think, oh, this is fun. I'm going to be very good at this because obviously I'm super smart. And then when they start actually coding, they, they, they think about, they think like, maybe I'm not as good and as smart as I thought it was that your experience. Yeah. That happened to me as well. Absolutely. You were a cocky developer or <laughs> yeah, I, junior I developer. I yeah. yeah. I thought I was smarter than, and than I, than I actually was related to coding. Yeah. Or maybe, maybe even the smart ones are humbled. You know, it, it it's, I don't even know what smart means because when you are a software developer, uh, being smart is not being fast. Actually, it's, it's one of the worst things you can do. Like usually what, what I value and I know all of my friends that are in leading technical positions and they actually pick people from the recruiting pool. I know that they value developers that take a little bit to do things and that have discipline and follow the process. And that requires patience and, and maturity because at, at some point it stops being fun. It's like doing the game as well. Like it's not about having fun. It's about doing a code that is reliable, that it's replicable in the entire company that follows the process and everything. And usually the cocky, super smart developers that think that they're really good, they don't value those type of rules because they think they can reinvent them. And also another thing is that when you're super fast, it, it shows off a little bit at the beginning of your career, because maybe you in the first six months, you're learning more than the other person. But then at some point, like let's say six years ahead, those that difference in velocity, it doesn't show as much because you you already know what you need to know to be good and to get paid and to have a successful career. So everything else you're learning, uh, it's going to add up, but it's not going to like make you shine uh, against other developers. Like you're going to be, you, you can be faster than them at learning, but both of you are going to be able to deliver quality code. So I don't think the velocity of learning is um, an important metric when becoming a, a developer or when, when being a, an established successful developer. I think if you, maybe you're going to have, if you're slower than, or if you slow, if you learn slower than the other developer, you're going to have to put more hours at the beginning, but then it's going to just even out basically. Yeah, I agree. So you consider yourself a, a fast learner? Yeah, I actually consider myself a fast learner. Even um, after I've learning code? It. Yeah, but, but I've improved it on, on the last years. At the beginning, I thought that, like, I'm not a fast learner anymore. At the beginning of the process, then I got some skills that helped me learn faster. Right. So you basically, you learn to learn. Basically. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, yeah, I uh, agree with that. Very as well. obvious, but it's not, it seems very obvious, but it's not, it's, it's actually, yeah. you require some skills. And that brings me to another enemy that is basically the way that society works right now. It's basically against your learning. Like the, like most of the people today, they don't read a lot. They don't like reading instructions. They don't like following a process that if you give them like, I don't know, 20 steps to follow, they will jump one of the steps, usually thinking that it's not necessary. 
it's like the same thing that when you are do, doing like a cooking recipe that you don't don't follow exactly as it is and you end up screwing your cake it's the same thing with coding like if you don't if you don't follow the process and you don't take the time to read the instructions and everything then you you end up being a bad developer or learning super slow or slower and that happens a lot like and doing the research as well this is not a society that that teaches you how to do research what do you think about research well um I think that doing research first, uh, it's underestimated. Doing research is not something that everyone knows how to do it. It's actually a skill that you should develop, that you should improve every day. And it's one of the most important things if you wanna, if you wanna grow, if you wanna keep growing on, on whatever profession you are at. Yeah, but maybe, maybe with ChatGPT, it's getting easier, isn't it? Yeah, it is, it, absolutely, it's, it's getting much easier. I but, think it's a. It's also that I think ChatGPT will become an enemy as well because at the beginning it helps you a lot, obviously, because it gives you all the answers, the basic answers, because it's trained for that. But then uh, ChatGPT stopped being trained, I think, like a year and a half ago, uh, if I remember correctly. And all the new yeah. things that are that are being thrown at the market, you know, this is obviously a career that that evolves super fast. So. ChatGPT is not training all these new things, and as uh, if they don't retrain it fast, it's going to become a problem then because you're going to be stuck in the past, basically. Since you're ChatGPT yeah. dependent for your research, you're stuck in the past. So yeah, it's we're not going to talk much about ChatGPT right now. I think, by the way, I I think you should use it. I don't think you should stop using it. I I don't agree with the statement on learning first without it, and then when you have the basis and w when you when you have all the foundations then you can start using it. I don't believe in that. I think you should start using it from today. That's fine. But then it, the, the, the problem of being stuck in the past will come. And then we, maybe we can talk about that in, in another episode. Yeah. Let's, let's, yeah, have you, with you. let's continue with your, with your story. So yeah, so you were humbled down. The video was good. You were, it was fun. You did your first game, but then you were humbled down by code. And uh, why? What did you try to do that didn't work? What did you try um, to build? Well, I tried to build uh, a more ambitious project, a more ambitious video game. Uh, not too much ambitious from from the previous one, but yeah, I tried to improve to do something better, and and then I realized that I, like I didn't learn enough to to get into that project, yeah. to like, get into that challenge. It's like when you watch football. And then you want to play football. You you don't don't learn anything about football by by watching it, right? Until you actually throw the ball, or or if it's soccer, kick the ball. Or... Yeah, correct. But yeah. Uh -huh. And what what did you do next? Like, okay, you, you you discovered that you weren't as good as you thought, and what was the approach? Well, uh, then I tried to to learn from a different way. I tried a different method that was like more structured, in my opinion. Which What's was, uh, I was looking for other courses where they gave me uh, like a, a structure, uh, material where step by step on how, on what I should learn with, uh, more stuff that I can read. And, and that's when I got into Coursera and Platzi for those who don't know what Platzi is, it's basically a very similar platform like Coursera, but, um, most related to technical skills and it's very famous on Latin America. And that brings me to another enemy. What do you, what do you think about these platforms? Just, just, just to, I'm curious about it. Yeah. Well, um, I got there. Uh, I had many problems on my learning process while I was on Coursera or Platzi. The first of them is that I wasn't getting, um, real and instant feedback on what I was building. So for example, they had like very few projects. That's another problem, but they have very few projects. And on one of them, if I got stuck, it was very hard to get help or get some feedback on why I, I didn't do it correctly. So that was one of the problems I had, like this, they don't give you enough feedback. Um, the other one problem question. is that, yep. One question. And do you get stuck? often when you are building these projects yeah of course that's 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 how often? something very common how often actually even today i get stuck uh 
more than once a day, like three to five times a day, even today after four years of experience. So, yeah. So getting that feedback basically. So, so how important is to get feedback? If you get stuck so often during your day, how important is to get feedback immediately? Well, it's, it's one of the most important things of your learning process. So right. that's why this method wasn't enough to me and to many other people. They don't give you right. no feedback and feedback is one of the keys. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I agree, like switching to Coursera is switching to another set of videos. So the difference is that in YouTube, you, you have spread, spread out videos. And now in Coursera, you have like a timeline of videos that you have to follow, but still no, no. But I do know that some teachers give like, they give you like a forum that you can ask questions in the forum in Coursera. Yeah. But that, so you can get feedback, but it's not that instant. Like it requires some time. Yeah. So that, that person. Do you remember? You. Do you remember the time that it takes or no? A couple of days. Uh, I don't remember exactly. A couple of days? Many. Okay. Yeah, but a couple of days. So. Okay. And in Platzi, do you have any feedback there? Um, no, I don't remember getting feedback on Platzi. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So feedback, uh, if, if you were to call it an enemy, I think it's the enemy would be all these like courses that try selling you for 20 bucks. Uh, the promise of becoming a good developer because it's it's not going to be, I mean, the 20 bucks are going to be well spent because I do think getting 150 videos for the technology they want to learn, it's it's good. But then which one, which course do you, do you do about which technology? Like choosing the right set of videos, I think it's way more important than than paying one dollar for the for the set of videos. So I'm not against the videos. I'm against. Uh, not having the right ones and at the same time not having the feedback so i i think that's where where platforms like coursera sell you this dream of just learn to become a developer and pay these three bucks because the 20 bucks are in a current deal and now you can get not a hundred let's say three hundred thousand videos for two minutes for two dollars and then it's it's a it's a fake promise right it's it's a commodity i think so the ideal my my ideal scenario for, for fixing this issue would be obviously to get a mentor and have someone that you can ask a lot of questions. I'm sure that you know someone that is a developer out there and hopefully you have enough trust or enough, um, a good relationship with that person and, and you can just start sending them question, sending them questions and getting answers faster than two days. Because if two days, then you're going to get stuck for two days and you're going to lose motivation. You, you got to keep it up. You got to keep moving. and, and it feels very good when you when you're stuck and you get unstuck because you fix the problem. That's super good. It's a very good feeling in coding. Uh, it's a lot of dopamine. So I do think that's an important thing. And having immediate feedback, let's say a couple of hours, it's is what you need uh, if you want to have a good a good learning pace. But at the same time, if you don't have that person around, don't worry about it because th there are other ways of learning that are out there and are also something accessible that will help you like a bootcamp right? and like some other things. So what was your, after you tried, so you tried Platzi, you tried Cursor and what happened immediately after that? Like, how did you feel? Well, again, I tried to do some, um, real life projects, but then I realized again, it like, they gave me some technical um, technical skills. Yeah. I acquired some technical skills from them, but I didn't have enough guidance after it on what should I build? What's the next step? Um, like how to keep progressing on that learning. Okay. So right. I got frustrated again. Um, the same problem I had before, cause I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do now. And, and that was where it was at that moment. And, um, did you quit? Like what was the, what happened next? Well, I got, I got some, uh, advice from family, from like maybe an old uncle and my father, and they told me just to wait for my mom. And I was very young at that time. And they told me that I should wait for university, start, um, start my university, got graduated, and then I can start looking for a job. Then I can start uh, building real life stuff. So, and that's what so I did. So basically you have to be older to learn code, I guess. Basically, <laughs> that's, what that's, you. that's yeah. their advice, yeah. Yeah, so th that's another enemy right there. Like, the fa your family can become your enemy against this goal of being successful in tech. 
because they they always seem to want to postpone things until you're more mature like age is some type of some type of requirement to do things and i think it's actually the opposite like if you get older it gets harder to find the right time right it's you have responsibilities i i do know a lot of people that are trying right now but they they keep interrupting their learning because they they have problems you know life comes at you so i would say the, exactly the opposite i would say if, if you're if you have i don't know if you're 15 years old right now and you want to learn code this is the right time to do it just start doing it right now get into in get mentorships and start working right now and and have a structured plan and follow it uh, resiliently after you achieve it because then life will come at you and you will have so many things that you want to have that developer salary already in your in your bank account by the moment you get the responsibility it's not the opposite like i don't understand that philosophy i think it's it's crazy and well did, did you follow your your company advice your family advice or what? yeah yeah i followed it and and i waited a couple of years but not not that specific time they told me i didn't wait until i graduated from university to start it. i just thought what i did is i graduated from high school and again that that spark uh came out again that i wanted to learn how to go that i wanted to start building amazing things so that's that's when i joined four gigs academy bootcamp and and i started my real learning process i started like getting some feedback i uh there was like a like four five months where i was learning real things where uh, i actually got the the real help i needed to to get my first job and build things right so uh, you actually quit you dropped the your your learning process for a couple of years yeah 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 i, I, well, I don't blame you i mean obviously having family advice is something something that you have to pay attention to not necessarily follow but pay attention so i i don't blame you and at the same time you were you were like you were hit with all these mental uh constructs and things and you thought that this was not for you and or maybe yeah i mean it's not like i don't know i don't know how waiting will help if you think it's not for you right it's crazy like Imagine you tell your family, oh, this is, the, it, I'm not learning enough. I, I don't think I'm good at this. And wait, wait, and you will be good at it. Like, why waiting will make you good at it? It's crazy. Like, yeah. it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any coherence. But yeah, you, yeah. you accepted that. And then you started the bootcamp. And was, was the bootcamp as difficult as you thought it would be? Or it was no, easy? Actually... You, and you thought it was easy. It actually was much harder than I thought. I thought that I could handle it in maybe 15, no, nine hours a week, which is uh, maybe maybe the, like the class time. And I thought that was enough. And it really wasn't. It took me like 15 to 20 hours per week. You you got humbled again. Yeah. Basically by code. Yeah, I got humbled again. Much harder. And, and this thought. is an experience that I, I also have heard uh, a lot of students but it happens to them as well. Like they, they take nine hours a week because that's how much time the classes take. But actually, since going to class is similar to watching a video, uh, it doesn't matter how, how much the teacher wants to make the class uh, that everyone participates and stuff. It would still be easier than being on your own at home. And a boot camp, in the majority of them, I think all of them, is, if not the majority of them, will require you to do homework a lot because that's when you actually feel uncomfortable. And you have to do your own research. Um, in the case of for gigs, they give you the tools. They give you a lot of tools for automatic correction, and and there's an AI that will help you and give you advice and stuff. But still, you're on your own. You're it's a very similar process to real life because in a company, no one will give you immediate feedback either. Like you, they want you to be independent in your desk and not stand stand up and ask questions all the time or or do video calls and stuff. Especially remotely now these days that you get hired remotely you need a lot of independence to, to work remotely. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, when you do a bootcamp, you, you will be required to do extra stuff at home. Let's say like the, the double amount of time or maybe more. The majority of people, I think it's more than double the amount of time. I think you were in a good average. If you say that it takes you 20, 20 hours a week, that's amazing. Usually that's a required time that we put in the bootcamp, but I do know that some people need 
more than that. And this brings me to another problem is that another enemy, it's going to be trying to do things all at once instead of doing a little every day. Because if you try, let's say you have Sundays available and then you do everything on a Sunday. You put, I don't know, 20 hours that day. You don't sleep. Then obviously the next days you'll be super tired. But as well, another problem that will happen is that your brain is not going to retain information from from one day to the next as or from one week to the other as well as it will retain from one day to the next you will forget a lot of things during the time that you don't practice so what we recommend is to do a little every day instead of a lot one day that's why the bootcamp format also works because it's not something you do on weekends it's something that you do after hours or maybe full time if you're getting into a full time experience and um, tell me a little bit more, like after you finished the bootcamp, um, how, how was your, how, how fast were you able to get a job? Well, after I finished the bootcamp, I wanted to be a freelancer. So I started getting okay. some, some projects from friends and family. Um, uh, it was like two months or maybe a month, one month after I finished the bootcamp that I got my first, uh, project and, that I started working on. And well, then before I, I get into a, a company, it was, it took like six months. So I was doing some projects as freelancer and I decided to get into a company and I get my first, uh, my first job as junior developer six months later. Oh, that's great. That's great. I think that's when you yeah. actually graduate. I think you graduate when you get paid to be a developer. That's it. The metric of success, I think getting, starting to get paid to keep learning because it's, it's not true that in six months you're going to learn everything you need. Like it's, you're going to be, you're still going to have a lot of fears and you're not going to feel confident, but still you will start getting paid. And then that's when, when you're going to improve super fast because the first six months will be solidifying the knowledge. And then that's when you start learning way more, way faster. Cause at the end it's all the same, it's all code. So once you have like the foundations, it, it gets way better. And um today like when did you find that first junior job the junior developer job how long ago it was like uh yeah like four years ago four years ago. were you ah four years ago you, you were hired for the first time yeah okay and then when you got hired how was that process after you got hired like how fast did you improve afterwards well on that first job um i didn't improve that much because I still needed a mentor. I still needed some feedback. And at the time my boss uh, didn't give me that, that much feedback. Then I started as, as a teacher assistant at four gigs Academy. And I think that's the moment where I started like improving a lot. That's the moment when I started improving, uh, was basically, uh, like, um, in all this knowledge established in in my in my mind okay i was getting all this knowledge established and and then i was ready to start building more things to start learning more things by my own so that's that's when i think as it all started to be to be much better to like learn more things by my own to be faster it was like three years ago okay and how do you feel today do you feel that you are a good senior developer that that can be very successful. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. As I can now, I think that I can learn basically everything by my own. I think that I can get into any other tech position. I can still learn new technologies. I think that. Are you cocky I, again? <laughs> uh, no, no. You're not cocky anymore. You think no, you're smarter anymore. than everyone else? Oh, no, 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 no. I don't think that I'm smarter than anyone else, but, um, but definitely I'm smarter than I was before. And, and I feel that there's a lot that I can learn now. There's a lot of things that I should learn, but now it's easier than I was before. Right. And are you happy with your career right now? Do you think it's a good career? Are you in the yeah, right, I'm really right happy. path? Yeah. I'm really happy with my career right now. As I said, it actually gave me a lot of free time to be with my family. It gives me a lot of free time to travel around the world um it gives me enough payment to like um have the lifestyle that i want so it's, it's really good i really like it 
Yeah. Okay. And just to finish up here, because we don't want to take more more time, we want we want to make this a thirty minute, maybe thirty five minute episodes, so that you can just listen to these on your commute or when when going from work to to your home or or when doing exercise exercising yourself and stuff. Uh, so, do you have any advice for people that want to get into code right now today? Well, my advice for these people is uh, get started, start today, um, do it even if you if you think that you are not for this, if you come for a different from a different profession, it doesn't care. Like get into it, start learning now. Second, you should you should definitely get a mentor. You it's very important to get some guidance on this process and to get instant feedback while you're learning. And well, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Start now. It's going to be hard at the, uh, at the beginning, but you'll see that how each day it's going to become easier, that you're going to get more skills that are going to make it easier. So start today and don't be afraid of, of the results. Tomas, do you want to put your Twitter out there? Yeah, sure. It's, it's Tomas Gonzalez, A-D. Tomas without an H, right? Like T-O-M. Yeah, correct. Tomas. T-O-M-A-S. Uh, Gonzalez, A-D. Gonzalez, you can send us a DM and we will help you out with to fight all these enemies. My Twitter is A-L-E-S-A-N-C-H-E-Z-R. So it's Alex Sanchez R. And I also want to give my two cents here about all these enemies that we spoke during the episode, like your family. I think you should be speaking with your family before starting the, the learning experience and tell them, listen, I'm going to take a couple of months or maybe more. It's going to change your life as well if I succeed. So please bear with me and help me with the kids, help me with the food, the cleaning and everything during this, this tough next months because our both of our lives is going to change a lot and, and your family as well. Don't let your mind be beat up by them. Don't follow bad advice. Yeah. You, you should write me, send me, an, send me a message to my Twitter and I'll help you out with the advices. Another enemy that we spoke about it today was about your, your, your mind and thinking that this is not for you. I would say that coding is for everyone. You don't need any math. You don't need any uh, like really hard, hardcore uh, skills. The only thing you need is a lot of, a lot of determination because it takes a lot of time and you have to be sitting in a chair for 10 hours, maybe more every day. Even after you get hired, you, will, you still have to get sitting to sit in a chair for that amount of hours. Obviously you have to stand up sometimes, but you know what I mean? Like that's a real skill. The real skill is determination and standing there and looking at the screen and being there and fixing the issues and not being put down by, by mental constructs or issues that you may encounter because that's the developer life. The developer life is fixing problems all day you are a problem solver so problems cannot uh, put you down like problems are the opposite problems are good because that that's why you get paid because you get paid to solve problems so as long as there are problems and you don't have any ai doing everything for you as long as there are problems you're gonna get paid I, that brings me to another thing that i don't think ai will replace you soon at all. So we're going to speak that in another episode, hopefully the next one or the next episode, but AI will put you down. So that's not your enemy right now. That's your, your compiler. That's very good for you. And if you are looking into getting to code right now, it's going to be amazing and AI won't, will not replace you. And then there's other problems out there, like all these influencers, YouTubers telling you things that you should not hear because those are shitty advice and I will help you to curate all that gibberish and pick the right influences or the right people to follow. And then I would say if, if you're learning to go, keep keep engaged with this podcast. We'll, we're going to bring you a lot of alpha and I've been doing this for a living for a long time now, for several years, more than seven years, teaching code and helping people. And then I've been coding myself for 25 years. I'm a very good coder as well, so I can give you technical advice as well. We're going to be looking for job opportunities we're going to be putting them on the screen and, and and giving them to you we're going to be analyzing the market we're going to help you navigate the market as it changes after covid before covid well, now it's remote it's not remote anymore how how to increase your possibilities of of 
or the chances to get a job faster, what should you do to your resume and stuff like that. We're going to talk about everything like that. And Tomas will be co-hosting with me. So we don't have yet our next episode, what's going to be about, but we'll, we'll publish it on Twitter uh, when the right time comes. And we hope you enjoyed this uh, first episode and that it gives you the motivation to start or continue your learning path today. One billion people are learning to code right now, but completion rates are only 15%. Join us on our next episode and let's do something about it.